So this is uh, thrombosis and COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, so first of all, I just say that I do not have any conflicts of interest to, um, to report for this work. Uh, so in Scotland, we have this project called EVE2, which stands for Early Pandemic Evaluation and Enhanced Surveillance of COVID-19. And it's a data platform consisting of primary and secondary care records, vaccination data. We have death records, uh, testing, viral sequencing, and more for the entire population of Scotland. So roughly 5.4 million people. And we have used that to carry out some important studies on vaccine effectiveness and safety. Um, so the history of this is that EVE-1 was actually created for the H1N1 outbreak in 2001, uh, 2009. And uh, that went into hibernation after that and was brought out of hibernation for the COVID-19 pandemic. And you can see a little more, more information about the sort of uh, work that we've been doing at, at the link um, at the bottom there. So the first study we did on uh, vaccine safety was uh, looking at first dose of Oxford, AstraZeneca and Pfizer. And we did a case control and self-control case series of blood clot and bleeding related events uh, after vaccination. So we looked at venous thrombosis, uh, arterial thrombosis, um, ITP, so idiopathic thrombocytopenia purpura, and some others. We also tried to study CVST, so cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, but we found that we just didn't have enough events. Uh, so CVST is a, is a very rare event, and even in the population of 5.4 million people, we didn't have enough to do uh, a sensible study. And so you can see a link again to this paper at, at the bottom. Uh, so this is an infographic explaining the main findings. So the study period for this was, uh, it started on the 8th of December 2020, which is when the vaccination program started in the UK, and it went until the 14th of April 2021. And during that time period, there was about 2.53 million first dose vaccinations in Scotland. Um, so our main results are that we didn't see any increased risk for any of the adverse events that we looked at uh, for Pfizer. But for Oxford AstraZeneca, we saw a, a small risk in the, in, uh, sorry, a small increase in the risk of ITP. Uh, so equivalent to about an additional 113 cases for every 10 million doses of uh, Oxford AstraZeneca. And we saw some suggested uh, uh, evidence uh, of, of uh, a risk in, uh, increase in risk of arterial thromboembolic events and uh, hemorrhagic events. Uh, but as I say, so we wanted to study CVST, we didn't have enough events. Uh, so in order to, to, uh, to study sort of rarer events, uh, we collaborated with some partners from across the other nations of the UK. And we did this under the DACVAP umbrella, so data and connectivity, uh, COVID-19 vaccines and pharmacovigilance. So it's a project that enables us to study COVID-19 vaccine safety and effectiveness using national data sets from across the four nations of the UK, and we're funded by HDR UK. And the key organizations involved, um, you can see them here. So in Scotland, it's mainly the University of Edinburgh and Public Health Scotland. In England, it's the Royal College of General Practitioners uh, based out of the University of Oxford. In Northern Ireland, it's Queen's University Belfast, and in Wales, it's uh, Swansea University and the SAIL uh, Data Bank. Okay, and just uh, I'll introduce you to the team briefly. So our, our principal investigator is Aziz Sheikh, who is the uh, director of the Usher Institute, and uh, there's, there's lots of other people here who I can't mention individually, but they've all been doing really great work over the last uh, two years on this, on this project. So the data that we have access to, uh, again, we have GP records, we have hospitalizations, mortality data, vaccinations and testing. And uh, the coverage is the whole of Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales. So the, the Scottish arm of this data comes from EVE2 and about 10% of England. Uh, and all records are pseudonymized and stored in highly secure trusted research environments. So this is the paper that we wrote on uh, CVST. So we did a pooled uh, self-controlled case series uh, analysis um, of 11.6 million individuals in England, Scotland, and Wales. And this was published in PLOS Medicine uh, about two months ago. Uh, so yeah, CVST is a, is a very rare type of blood clot in the brain. Uh, it's a very serious adverse event. So approximately three to four incidents per million people each year. 
And we did a self-control case theory, theory study comparing the rate of CVSD in the four weeks following vaccination to a baseline period uh, using data from England, Scotland, and Wales. And the main finding was uh, a roughly two-fold increased risk of CVSD events in the four weeks following Oxford AstraZeneca. Uh, we didn't see any increase in risk for Pfizer. And again, there's a link to the paper at the bottom. So this is uh, just a, a quick sort of primer on self-controlled case theory. So it's a study design that sort of uh, arranged around the date of exposure, which for us was a date of, of vaccine administration. So we follow the person for roughly four weeks, well, exactly four weeks, in fact, uh, after uh, they were vaccinated. And we also um, follow them for the 14 days prior, which we call the pre-risk period and uh, a 90 day period before the pre-risk period, which we call the reference period. So we compare the rate of events during the risk period and the, uh, the, the reference um, period. And so a major advantage of the self-controlled case series is that it's a within-person comparison. So, so all confounders that are time invariant during the study period are perfectly controlled for, and we don't need to have uh, knowledge of any of them. Uh, okay, so the data from each country are, are held in secure trusted research environments in each nation of the UK, and uh, individual level data is not permitted to be shared. However, count level data can be shared uh, confidentially. So self-controlled case series involves fitting a conditional Poisson model where the strata are labeled by individuals, and of course, because it's a Poisson model, um, the only, uh, I mean, the outcome is a, a count. So we only actually need event counts in each observation period um, to do, to actually fit the model. And so amazingly, it is possible to do a genuine pooled analysis using data from TREs that are in different locations that controls perfectly for all time and very individual characteristics without sharing any individual level data between those TREs. And when I say it's a genuine pooled analysis, what I mean, is that the results that we get are identical to what we would have got if we had started with all of the data in, in one place. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna go through sort of a, a brief outline of the actual procedure. So what you do is you obtain event counts from each country. So we count of events uh, by country and by the time period in the self-control case series. So here I've just mocked up some sort of, uh, you know, a toy example. Um, so say we have one event in the reference period in England, we have one event in the reference period and one event in the previous period in Scotland, and then two events in the risk period in Wales. So that's data that we're allowed, that's count level data, and we're allowed to share that um, between uh, the, the TREs. So we add them up row-wise, so we add up the rows, uh, so we end up with two, one, and two. And uh, the next step is to expand that into a full data set with synthetic IDs for each individual. So remember we had two uh, events in the reference period. And so if you look at synthetic IDs one and two, they both have events in the reference period. Uh, if you look at synthetic ID three, that's a single event in the pre-risk period. And then four and five are the, the events that occurred in the risk period. And the other thing to note here is that we're looking at incident events. So we know that each event corresponds to one and only one individual. Um, and then the last step is just to estimate the model. Uh, so we did that using the, the CLOGIT or CLOGIT command from the, the survival package in, in R. And uh, the idea there is that, so, uh, you know, we're fitting a conditional Poisson model, uh, but the likelihood function of a conditional Poisson model in which the counts are either zero or one is actually identical to the likelihood function for a conditional logistic, like the, the, the corresponding conditional logistic model. So we can use the, the um, this CLOGIT or CLOGIT function from R uh, to do the estimation. Uh, and that's it, that's that's how we do it. Um, and so this is an infographic summarizing our results. And so it turns out that an independent research group um, published about the same time that we did uh, with findings that were almost identical. So. Uh, the top study here the, the, in the top row, they had data from 46 million people in England. And then the bottom row is our study, 11.6 million people across England, Scotland, and Wales. And we both found uh, uh, pretty much a, a twofold uh, increase in risk 
of, of CVST um, in the 28 days following vaccination with Oxford AstraZeneca. One thing to note quickly is that, you know, in the top row here, it says 0 0.9 to three extra cases of clots per million people uh, for the English study, whereas for us, it was 0 0.25 extra cases. And that discrepancy is um, purely due to, uh, we, we had different estimates of the background incidence. You know, so the incidence of CVST under normal conditions, um, but the actual risk multiplier as it were was um, identical in those two studies, um, which is very nice. We had sort of two independent research groups uh, coming to, to more or less identical conclusions. Okay, yeah, so our study provides a proof of concept for carrying out pooled analyses across data sets that are held in um, securely in different locations. So it's possible to extend our methodology to uh, target trial study designs, which we have actually done uh, just now. So we're, we're now um, doing a, a pooled uh, analysis of vaccine waning across uh, the four nations of the UK using a, a similar sort of methodology to, to pool. Um, but we reckon uh, that the methodology that we're using can be um, extended to, to other uh, study designs as well. Okay, and that's it. So our, our acknowledgements, uh, so we're funded by UK Research and Innovation, and it's a partnership between lots of different universities, uh, which is supported through uh, the Data and Connectivity National Core Study. Um, and that's it. So thank you.